Bad Dream Fever review. Let's get started. Bad Dream Fever is the latest in a series, but you do not need to play any of the previous games to enjoy this one. Bad Dream Fever is a horror point and click adventure game developed by Desert Fox and released in 2018, available to Mac, Windows and has later also been released to the Nintendo Switch. There's definitely some great stuff here, although a few very interesting puzzle spikes at certain spots. The story is that an apocalypse has happened and you must figure out what's going on to this world. The game itself is very much a minimalistic adventure game. Each screen is a still image. You can click on things and watch certain things interact. Figuring out what the puzzle is and solving them by collecting various items. The nature of the game completely changes at about, I guess, the three quarters point. Up until that point, the game definitely gives you some very interesting logic-based puzzles and there's definitely that something has gone terribly wrong. Nature. The game itself is relatively tame. You don't have to worry about dying. The game itself has these various environments that you'll go in and out of. And there's quite a lot to discover. And that kind of takes me to my main nitpick. And how the game kind of messes with puzzle logic and your sense of exploration. Bad Dream Fever is built on its own sense of internal logic with its puzzles. To compound things further is how the game handles interactables and a twist that also messes with the logic of the world. Progress requires random backtracking and searching areas repeatedly for clues and items, as the game won't let you collect objects if you haven't been told you need them yet. You also have an inventory, but you don't use or combine items from it. Having the correct item for an interaction just changes the cursor to that item automatically. The game will give you hot spots of items that you can pick up, interact with, look at, you name it. And this is a way of cluing the player into what's considered important and relevant to the puzzle solving. The problem is that what's considered relevant changes based on what's going on in the game. So let's say you have a puzzle that requires you to pick up a sponge. Now earlier in the game you would find that sponge on a random shelf somewhere, but if you go to click it, the game will not give you any indication that it's an important item. It does not have a hotspot to it. It will only pop up or let the player interact with it once they have discovered that puzzle. So this creates a situation where you'll get a puzzle but not have any real idea what the solution is until you start looking back at all the areas and seeing if anything new can't be interacted with. And this is not a game where if an item can be interacted with later, that it will prompt you if you go to pick it up. Instead, hot spots will basically pop in and out as the puzzles demand it. And like we were just saying, the puzzle logic in this game begins to get very abstract and surreal the further you get into it. But that also makes it a little bit harder for the player to know just what exactly they're looking for in terms of a solution. There were a few cases where I solved the puzzle just by going through each screen and just randomly clicking on various objects, hoping that one of them is in fact a new hotspot for me to use. Now the game itself is linear, so you're not going to run a situation where everything is open, requiring for you to do a complete backtrack. It can be a little bit on the frustrating side to not even know what pieces you should be looking at to solve a puzzle. With that said, the story is very interesting and the twist does really change things around. And I would say that it is worth it enough to put up with a little bit of crazy puzzle logic here and there. Thanks for watching.